Now I'm back with this video where I swatched the uh, burnt orange and burnt sienna. I'm not much of a brown color uh, painter, although I understand its benefits in painting, in landscape. I don't tend to use this color too often, although I really liked the look. That's why it probably took me forever to get myself to swatch it. Just looking at this, it doesn't inspire me. Um, although now with fall being a few weeks away, I might be looking, especially in this burnt orange family, uh, at some fall landscapes. Um, I have a pretty large collection, I would say, for PO48. I really like the transparency of this pigment and I'm surprised how different it is from brand to brand. I have Daniel Smith, Da Vinci and Core and just a pure form of PO48 and then I have this Burnt Sienna Light from Daniel Smith which is PO48 and PR101. This tube came in the set, uh, I want to say Alvaro Castanet set. Uh, what I think they sell these sets based on artist preference or they pick the colors. I'm not entirely sure But that's where that come from if you could look um, Compare the two of them although this has PR11 and PO48 I think it's a really good balance of the two colors indeed I swatched the PR101 um, on this side and now that it dried it looks more similar to this uh, red oxide than the burnt orange. Burnt orange slightly yellower than the mix. Still very similar property, very easy to lift, easy to layer. Some texture with both PR 101 from Daniel Smith and this burnt orange have. Very transparent, both of them. Um, I wouldn't say this is necessary. If you cannot decide between burnt orange and the transparent red oxide, this would be like a middle, um, middle ground, I would say, between the two colors. Uh, I'm not sure if they even sell it in a large tube, um, just because I had it from that little set. I got like a 5ml tube. Anyway, moving on, comparing the PO48, this most... A smooth one, I would say, is the uh, core. It went on really easy. Although I've been swatching with my uh, number six from Princeton Neptune, it's a little small and uh, probably a brush that's ready to retire. And it, I had some hard time kind of um, even out the color. Again, this is cellulose paper, so that's not an advantage either. And then uh, the Daniel Smith I uh, use straight from the tube. I don't have those in the pen. And Core and Da Vinci there from the pen. So maybe that's a little easier if your paint is already dry. Uh, da Vinci, a little splotchy, but overall comparable uh, and smooth and texture. Most texture, Daniel Smith. I liked the uh, coolness kind of from the core. You can see the least amount of yellow and then you'll smith a nice balance uh, going towards warm. Uh, on this other side we have uh, burnt sienna so this is definitely a color I don't care for especially because I tried when I first picked up my watercolor paints I bought Sennelius uh, burnt sienna which is probably the most opaque and also like most of the Sennelia paints, it has those white or light color dots on my black line. So I don't know if it's fillers or brightness or whatever there is. And also the texture, when I started painting in watercolor, I didn't know what to make of that. So that kind of um, put a little bit of a snag in that experience. Uh, Burnt Sienna from Da Vinci, same issues. Uh, I didn't get it very smooth, but it does move very nice in water. Neutral, probably classic Burnt Sienna. Some deposits on the black line, but not as strong. And the core one, 
surprisingly slightly yellower than the, the two of them thinking that the queen uh, gold deep as they call their po 48 it was the coolest this one is definitely the warmest some deposit um on the black line i would say uh opaque harder to lift probably the hardest the cores were harder to lift on all both of the colors and then here at the end i have the transparent red oxide from daniel smith um i thought of being a better replacement from the burnt sienna but this also has some texture and um, what i like about it is the transparency so if you like a burnt sienna that uh, doesn't have a lot of texture and don't mind the opacity you can go for core but um transparent red oxide it's a good replacement i would say and i also made a chart since in watercolor burnt sienna and uh, ultramarine are known as kind of a famous pair you can uh, create all sorts of interesting grays and colors i made this chart at the time i don't think i had all this uh, pigment actually i think i did because i see the burnt sienna light and i think that was the last set i bought you can see a number of grays i have pbr7 right here the first three columns very similar results uh, very nice neutral grays depending on the properties of the ultramarine their intensity and i even have a Windsor and Eaton cobalt blue deep very similar maybe the granulation is a little larger this paper has a very big texture so you'll see more of the pigment deposit in the grooves the burnt uh orange the po 48 from da vinci and daniel smith in this middle column for some reason i didn't swatch the i didn't have the queen gold deep so i do miss one of them uh, you can see the presence of the yellow undertone in the paint i got for especially with the da vinci almost uh a sh like a greenish tint to um to these mixes and I wanted to redo it just in case this especially is the more pronounced with the Sennelia French Ultramarine um, because my paint could have been contaminated but I can see it also with the Sennelia Ultramarine light. Uh, Daniel Smith not so much of a green only with this French Ultramarine from Sennelia which is interesting because this one also has a PV19 listed as a pigment so that would, should take out a lot of that yellow but overall interesting mixes i have here core van dyke brown which you can see very similar if you want more uh lower values like darker colors this will give you about the same grays but it can go much much darker in value and the transparent red oxide you can tell especially with some of the blues you get the red kind of standing out and get slightly violet mixes especially with the Sennelia French ultramarine which again it has a violet in it so, but you can see the nice deposits here I'm bringing closer to the camera it's almost like a oxide violet um, and then just for comparison i added in this last com column the snellia permanent alizarine crimson deep which is the pr206 on some papers when i swatch that colors to me it looks similar to uh, like a burnt orange but in mixes you can see it looks more like a red again i enjoy swatching it i have yet to make a painting where this colors or this color is a star but let me know what's your favorite a burnt orange if you use it how about burnt sienna if you have a particular brand that you like or you know it works best for you in your paintings and i'll see you in my next video i think i'm gonna try and get done with all the browns so we can see some bright yellows so stay tuned I'll see you in my next video.